Rajfeo Wijsinga is a Sri Lankan member of parliament and also an advisor on reconciliation to the president. And he's also the former secretary of the Human Rights Ministry. Joining us now live from Bangkok to discuss uh, these allegations, uh, Mr. Wijsinga, that were aired on a British uh, broadcaster. First, your response uh, to the allegations that your forces in Sri Lanka committed these atrocities. Well, I've seen a little bit of the picture that you kindly sent me. And I think the answer is just as we said to Channel 4 earlier, that there is much evidence of manipulation. For instance, the first time Channel 4 showed some films, uh, they gave a date of January. They've never explained why they gave a false date. Uh, they said it came from a mobile phone, which was straight from the telephone. They've now actually admitted with regard to their second video that it was edited. And surprisingly enough, this editing uh, ended up in what they showed the second time round being upside down. The three sequences are reversed. And the fifth sequence was, according to the so-called UN experts, taken at a different time and date. All right, now, it, I suspect that this okay. film as well seems to be uh, manipulated. I'm not saying everything in it is fake. Obviously not. So but you there admit must that's be some so you admit sort of then, rationale for the way they put things together. So you admit then that uh, the footage in it is true if you say that some of it is not fake? No, no, what I'm saying is that some of those could very well have been done uh, by the Tigers themselves. I think you've just seen recently evidence in Canada about, and that's in a court of law with proper standards of evidence, you've seen that they admit to have executed Sri Lankan soldiers. Uh, the chap in the case uh, said he didn't actually fire, but he did said did nothing when the people around him killed captives. And it seems quite possible that okay. much of uh, what was shown was in fact done by the Tigers. All right, of but, course, but there but are other have... general scenes okay. which could well relate to actuality. All right, but we have you on the program and you're a member of the government, so we We'd like to talk about these atrocities reportedly committed by the Sri Lankan forces. I'd just like to show you uh, some uh, parts of the video uh, that uh, the Channel 4 obtained and we at Al Jazeera here are showing as well. And if, uh, I'm not sure if you can see that on your monitor in front of me, but for our viewers... No, um, I think you failed to get a, get a monitor right, in here, okay, but you well, did kind of send me, so I'll try I'll and remember what it is. To, I'll describe to you what, you're look, yeah, what uh, the viewers are looking at. And there are uh, videos showing uh, Sri Lankan soldiers uh, raping and sexually abusing uh, women. Uh, what do you respond, uh, what's your response to this video? It would be ridiculous. The pictures you showed me didn't show any abuse happening at all. It had a few comments, one or two of those, but I think it's purely subjective, seemed to me to be very strange and not the type of Sinhalese that would, you, that would be used. Interestingly enough, the second Channel 4 video, I saw a version which had speech in Tamil. And I think there are uh, uh, good uh, uh, evidence to suggest that some of that was certainly manipulated. I think with regard to the so-called sexual allegations, it's fascinating that the um, so-called Darusman panel that was meant to look into this, which keeps talking about credible allegations, distances every single mention, I've written about this, of sexual abuse. Um, for instance, um, many allegations were made which turned out to be completely false. The Guardian, for instance, which first carried the producer of this uh, video's article, you very kindly sent me a link and I looked through it at some old stories and on three occasions the Guardian had to apologize for the falsehood they had said earlier, including what you said about the UN having said thousands of civilians had died. Yes. I have here in front of me the headline of the Guardian that says UN calls for inquiry and underneath it says that they had to issue a correction and this never happened. All right, I'm well, afraid let's just what's show happened you. is a lot of lies are being told and turned into myth. This is very, very unfair. Okay, well, let's uh, just show you another video that uh, we have here. And uh, you can, uh, we were talking about sexual allegations just a moment ago, but this is actually showing the shelling of hospitals, uh, Mr. Wijsinka, the aftermath of the shelling of hospitals and the killing of civilians. Well, I think we've pointed out before, and the panel actually does this, that uh, the LTT kept its heavy weapons near a hospital, and this is a difficult choice. I mean, your, your, your report just now mentioned the NATO bombing of, civil, of, uh, of Tripoli, in which civilians have died. There's lots of evidence for that. No one seems to care about that. No one seems to try to stop the murder of civilians taking place now. And sometimes one wonders whether some of this isn't an attempt to divert attention from 
the killing of civilians for uh, purported aim that uh, it seems uh, even the US Congress now is thinking twice about. But well, very, very people... sadly, I'm afraid that if you have heavy weapons used by the LDT, uh, what do you do? It's a difficult choice, but you've got to stop it happening. I monitored as head of the Peace Secretariat what Tamil Net said day after day, and there was never any systematic shelling of hospitals. There were occasional allegations that shells had fallen on hospitals. This video if that indeed happened, that is a great pity. But what can this you expect video, Mr. when Witch people Singer. allowed 300,000 people to be taken as hostages and no one tried to stop? All right. Well, this it's video, this video speaks a different story than what uh, you're telling us, and uh, also. Uh, uh, the last video I'd like to show you here on Al Jazeera is actually footage that uh, came to us uh, that we obtained in August. This was a couple of months ago and uh, per reportedly showing the execution of Tamils as well. At the time, the UN came out and said that the video in August was indeed credible. There it is. We're just showing it uh, to our viewers. And your response at the time, the Sri Lankan government, was that uh, this was doctored. But this video is very similar to the one that's now come to light and aired by Channel 4. Well, I, I don't think you listened to what I said at the beginning. There was a video shown in 2009, which claimed Channel 4 said it was made in January. We pointed out that the dates on the video were completely different. Channel 4 refused to give either us or the UN a copy. Instead, the UN expert had to get a copy from something called Journalists for Democracy. And at least one member of that was a Sri Lankan journalist who had to leave Sri Lanka because he had made away with a lot of money uh, belonging to it was a non uh, an NGO that's very critical of government called CPA, they had to put something in the newspapers dissociating themselves from this guy because he'd stolen some money. So perhaps he would do anything for money. Secondly, the, uh, Channel 4 produced the video again last year. It was five minutes long and at that stage, although Channel 4 didn't admit it, the so-called UN experts had to admit that it had been edited and edited upside down as I told you. And in any case, if you look through the reports of those so-called experts and uh, analyze them carefully as I have done it is actually very very upsetting that no one in the so-called international community looks at our analysis of these videos All right. they simply dismiss any analysis okay. done by Sri Lankans as being Sri Lankan but never take into account the fact that these so-called analysts work together and they have been a team that has been used more than okay, once, one of them for money by the Times newspaper. It's a disgrace. All right, then, if, on that note, and according to what you're saying, will you submit to an international inquiry? Absolutely not. We have made it Why very, very clear that if credible evidence is... Because when you talk of international inquiry, we know perfectly well this so-called Darusman panel had people who prejudged the issue. Mr. Ratna actually talked of apartheid in Sri Lanka when you know perfectly well that Sri Lanka has had many Tamils in high position. We've always had Tamil cabinet ministers, but I'm afraid the LTT had a separatist terrorist agenda, and it is extremely sad to find other people falling in with this instead of helping us to move towards the reconciliation All right, but that most Tamils and most Sinhalese want. Okay, Mr. Wichsinga, we I don't appreciate... think we are going to play to agendas of other countries. All right, well, a lot of we people might We know perfectly well that David Miliband admitted that he was going on this because he wanted votes. The WikiLeaks made that very, very clear. And it is disgraceful that politicians try to get votes by sacrificing people to terrorism. All right, so they, they might disagree with stop. you. They might ask you to submit to an international inquiry if you have nothing to hide. But we'll have to end it there. But thank you very much, Mr. Rajfa Wichsinga. Well, we appreciate you talking to us on Al Jazeera. We want Thank fairness, you. we want evidence. We will look at any evidence. All right, appreciate it.